Hello, Jeff Cassidy and today we're doing a demonstration of CPR on an unconscious non-breathing casualty. Now, first aid is always applied under the principles of D, R, S, A, B, C, D. So we have D for danger, R for asking for a response or checking for a response from the casualty, send, sending for an ambulance by calling triple O and also for a defibrillator. Airway, checking the airway of the casualty, checking their breathing, commencing CPR and using a defibrillator. So under this scenario, with danger, you're checking for danger to yourself first and foremost, then your casualty and also the bystander. That's very important. So we're going to make the assumption that there is no danger today. So now we're going to check for a response and I'll demonstrate this. So come up to the casualty. Hello, can you hear me? What's your name? Can you hear me? And you can also squeeze the back of their shoulders and see if there's any movement in their face or their eyes to see if they can feel that little bit of discomfort as I squeeze their shoulders. We'll again make the assumption that there is no response so you're going to ask a bystander who's hopefully nearby to call an ambulance. Now when you ask them to call an ambulance, it's, can you please call an ambulance? Call triple zero, call for an ambulance. Could you please tell them exactly where we are, that we have a male or a female, the approximate age, and could you tell them that they're unconscious, not breathing, could we send an ambulance straight away please? Now we'd also like you to get a defibrillator. Now they're becoming more and more common, so if there's one in the environment where we are, getting a defibrillator is critical to the success of this first aid. So we'll make the assumption now that the ambulance has been called and now what we're going to do is check the airway. So we're going to open the casualty's mouth like this and we're going to have a very good look inside to see if there's any obstruction in the airway. If there's no obstruction, we can commence checking for breathing. However, if there is an obstruction, the casualty needs to be placed on their side and whilst they're on their side, you can grab the casualty's hand and fingers if you prefer to scrape away any obstruction that's inside the casualty's mouth. It's very important to get rid of that obstruction. So we'll consider that we've done that and we'll put the casualty now back onto their back and now we're going to check for breathing. Now to check for breathing, we need to put our head down over their mouth and see if there's any breathing coming out of their nose or mouth onto my cheek. And I'm also putting my hand on their stomach and I'm looking for any rise and fall of their stomach or chest. So we're looking, listening and feeling for any breathing at all for 10 seconds. Now, we'll make the assumption there's no breathing, however, it's important to understand that abnormal breathing is not considered breathing. So, if there's a, a gasp only every few seconds and it's not normal breathing, then we must commence CPR. So, to commence CPR, we put our hands over the chest. Now, you can either lock your fingers or you can place one hand around the wrist and we need to do 30 compressions and then two rescue breaths and it's 100 compressions in one minute. I'll demonstrate the compressions and the rescue breaths and then we'll take a pause. Now the compressions need to go one third of the ch chest depth and let the chest rise after you've done the compressions. I'll demonstrate this now. With the two rescue breaths, you pinch the nose, you use a pistol grip, you open the chin, pulling the mouth down, you put in two breaths, looking for the chest to rise. 
and then back into the compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. You'll notice when I'm doing the compressions that what I'm doing is actually locking my arms and using my body weight to do the compressions. It's much easier than doing compressions like this, which are ineffective. So we'll take it to 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And again, one and two and three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. And so on. It's important to keep a good rhythm. A hundred compressions in a minute. You can only stop the compressions when the ambulance arrives and the ambulance officer tells you to stop compressions or the patient recovers or the defib unit has turned up and it's ready to go. It hasn't just turned up but the pads are applied and it's ready to go. Or the only other reason you could stop CPR is if you're absolutely physically exhausted and you cannot continue. They're the only reasons why you would stop CPR. I'll continue on. As you can see, CPR is not that hard. And with early access to CPR and a defibrillator, there's a good chance you can save somebody's life.